Hey guys, I'm Kyle Alexander. I'm in Rockingham, North Carolina at Rockingham Dragway for the 10th anniversary of the Rudy's Spring Truck Jam. Behind me here, I've got a 6.4 LS and with me is Matt Rice. And this is your engine of the week. Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pengrade One and Elring Goss Original. Matt, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to me today. Absolutely. I mean, I've got so many questions about this. What? First of all, just tell me what what is this combination? What's the 6.4 LS sitting in here? So this is a 1974 Chevy Nova that we have appropriately named Fool's Gold. Um, I've had this car for four or five years now going on. Um, and this thing has raced across the country in all different trims, all different styles, everything from uh, the original motor, which was 5.3 LS to uh, big block to uh, nitrous LS to big block nitrous to all kinds of stuff. And it's a current configuration is a uh, stock bottom end six liter turbo LS. Very cool. And I understand you've had quite the journey just to get down here uh, to Rockingham. Tell me a little bit about what's happened recently and how this engine came together. So this engine is uh, is, is a home built deal. Um, it's, it's stock bottom end. Uh, we do have a set of PRC 220 heads on it. There is a custom camshaft from Texas Speed. Uh, I work with Texas Speed and those guys have been nice enough to get us a camshaft to work more appropriately with the combination. Um, Trick Turbo Air to Water Intercooler, Snake Eater Injector, uh, Pro Series Injectors, and going all through a Power Glide, you know, making probably somewhere in the ballpark of 900,000 horsepower. And, you know, to get here this weekend, I've had some, some of my own life stuff go on. You know, I've, I've done YouTube, I've traveled the country, I, I work in the diesel industry. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I ended up having surgery and been waiting on this for a long time and it was kind of my like the thing that would get me back to back in the garage wrenching back on chasing my goals doing you know chasing my dreams doing the things I want to do and uh, so I ended up having that surgery it got infected so then I went into the hospital for a little while longer and got out of the hospital Tuesday so Wednesday I slept till about one in the afternoon and then I woke up and I hit up my guy Brandon and I said hey um, this thing was slightly torn apart and we had taken it apart from the last time we raced it, which was back in September of last year. So it's been sitting apart ever since. And I said, hey, do you want to throw that thing back together again and see if we can go ahead and just make some passes. Just let go of the button uh, just to get me back in a car. I've been dealing with health stuff, life stuff, everything. You know, it just was important to me to get back behind the wheel and, and enjoy myself this weekend. Just for my reference, today's Friday. Yes. You just put this together from Tuesday, this past Tuesday to this Friday? How long did it take to put this together? Uh, well, this is this has been years of work. Uh, so, you know, originally when I bought the car, it was completely primer gray. It did have a 350, 350 trans in it, but the 350 was half torn apart. Um, and then I started sanding down the primer and that's where we found the gold underneath. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, we gotta keep it. So my fiance Mallory spent an ungodly amount of hours sanding down all the primer off this thing. Anywhere where you see rust was bare metal that they had already sanded to. And then we took a mix of hydrogen peroxide and salt. And if you spray bare metal with hydrogen peroxide and salt, it'll rust instantly. And then what you can do is take some clear coat and when it gets to whatever point, you know, the longer you let it sit, the more it'll rust and all that. Uh, when you're happy with it, then you hit it with some clear coat. So we did that. And then it's been no prep raced across the country, uh, street raced. I put it into a wall at 120 miles an hour. Oh, um, <laughs> I put it into a field. I mean, like th this car, I, I have other cars, but this car through and through has just been the living version of my personality. It, it's who I am. It's, you know, it's home built. You see this turbo kit, I built all this and it literally was, uh, you know what? Let me just stick it together. like. We, if it doesn't work, we can always change it. Well, what is, Brandon, it's been two years, like two years, and the only thing holding the weight of the turbo is the turbo kit itself. And it is all solid mounted, there's no slip couplers, there's no you know, flex joints or anything. And everybody's like, oh, it's gonna break. And when I get on the two-step, it shoots flames and the turbo goes like this. And 
but it hadn't cracked yet. It hadn't done, you know what I mean? The thing that we thought was supposed to just be a temporary thing because I was just tired of not having a Turbo LS car. And now it's been two plus years later and it's gone a best of 577 and I forget the mile an hour. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and honestly, that's with power left on the table. Um, we just haven't been able to get it all out of it. This thing doesn't really want a 60 foot very well. It's been road hard and put away wet. Like the chassis is tired, you know, you know, I have another Nova and that's kind of where we got to is I have another Nova that I got in a trade deal. It's already four length back half. And I'm like, this needs to be four length and back half. So everything eventually will go to that other car. Um, but for now, like this thing is just old faithful. Like literally it hadn't ran in six months, eight months, whatever it's been. And we put the turbo back on, we hooked a couple pipes back up, we put some water back in it, bump, 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 fired right up. Uh, on E85, it's been sitting in there for months. I did now just clean the fuel filters out, uh, but you know, the injectors didn't miss a beat, nothing, nothing missed a beat. It's, it likes that kind of treatment, you know what I mean? For it sure. likes to be abused. It's seen some things. It has. It's seen some things, but hey, all for the better. Makes it for quite a unique build out here. Absolutely. Uh, at, at Rudy's Spring Truck Jam. Uh, for the weekend, got any goals for it? I mean, you said around 900 to 1,000 horsepower is what you're aiming for. Any other goals? Uh, last time we had it out was when it hit its personal best 577, and that was at the ODSS season finale. So we race in all the sideshow stuff. Um, obviously, not being a diesel engine, we can't race in the Outlaw Diesel Super Series, but we can race in the, they used to have a gas force diesel thing. They've got a radial thing now on Friday nights. We don't have a radial tire on it. Um, shout out to Mickey Thompson. They just came on board. We're going to get our radial situation figured out. But, um, you know, my goal is just at this point, let go of the button, see if it'll go down the track. If it does, I got some new fuel, which is C16. And um, essentially what I'm trying to do there is stretch my fuel pump because we're kind of at the limit of the fuel pump on the E85. So if I can switch over to C16, it uses about 33% less more fuel. Uh, which at 20 pounds of boost equals six more pounds of boost, rough math. So, you know, I know we can't 60 foot any harder, but if we could put another 77 on the board, a 60, maybe a 50, I'd be super pumped. Cool. Well, Matt, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, showing me this awesome, very unique build. Uh, be sure to keep up with everything that Matt's doing uh, with, again, the 6.4 LS, and be sure to keep up with all of our engines and everything happening in the uh, engine industry at enginebuildermag.com. That's it for now, and we'll see you in the next engine of the week. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. Hey, while I've got you guys here, I wanted to tell you about Find a Builder. It's a new microsite on enginebuildermag.com that's great for both engine shops and for potential customers looking to get engine work done. If you're an engine builder, this site is a place where you guys can list your shop and what you guys do to potential customers through enginebuildermag.com. It's an easy subscription-based microsite that'll let you guys connect to a new audience. And if you're a potential customer looking to get engine work done, this is a source to help you guys find a shop that's in your area or one that specializes in the type of engine work that you're trying to get done. Make sure you guys are checking out Find a Builder on enginebuildermag.com. Thanks.